Have you been wondering what causes high blood pressure after giving birth? Well, we're talking about that and more today. I'm Dr. Perkins. I'm a board certified OBGYN, passionate about women's health. And so today we're talking about just that and more. This is a very important topic to talk about today because having high blood pressure after pregnancy can be very sneaky, but very dangerous at the same time. Today, we will talk about the different types of high blood pressure after giving birth, the signs and symptoms that you should know, and the complications and treatment of high blood pressure after pregnancy. Let's dive into this. Pregnancy-induced hypertension. P-I-H. That is the medical term for anyone in pregnancy who has a new onset of elevated blood pressures. Now, having hypertension in pregnancy is not something that you can detect necessarily on your own. And this is because our blood pressures are constantly changing and we can't necessarily feel when that change has occurred. So I really want us to have this conversation today so that maybe this information may help you or help someone save their lives. Pregnancy-induced hypertension can happen at any point during the pregnancy. In particular, we give this diagnosis after 20 weeks of pregnancy and any time in the postpartum period. Now, while this video is focused on after giving birth, we will briefly talk about what this hypertension looks like in pregnancy as well as in the postpartum period. Now, in general, our baseline blood pressures are usually in a very normal state regardless of the type of activities that we're doing. So if you go for a run, or you go up and down the stairs, like say three flights of stairs, while your heartbeat might increase, your blood pressure should remain just about at your baseline. In people who are pregnant beyond 20 weeks, sometimes what can happen is that as the placenta is developing and continuing with the pregnancy internally inside of your uterus, sometimes there can be a problem with the placenta and your uterus that causes your blood pressures to increase separate from you having any possible problems with blood pressures in the past. In fact, some people with pregnancy-induced hypertension may develop them only in their pregnancies and in between their pregnancies, they have absolutely no blood pressure issues. Some people with chronic hypertension, meaning that at baseline you have a diagnosis of high blood pressure, you may constantly have elevated blood pressures, but in pregnancy, you may have an even more elevated blood pressure baseline level. It's important for us to understand that because if you're going to your doctor's visit during your pregnancy and every visit your blood pressures are normal, but all of a sudden your blood pressures are starting to increase, it could mean that you're now developing a more dangerous sequela inside of your body. Now, if you're enjoying our conversation so far, please do subscribe to my channel. I would love to hear more about your thoughts on this topic so you can also leave a comment below. At baseline, you can have elevated blood pressures that are not linked with a deeper problem internally. With that, your blood pressures may be called labile, meaning that they'll increase and decrease over time. If there are no problems internally with your organs, this is called PIH, pregnancy-induced hypertension. If this blood pressure problem starts to affect your organs like your brain or your lungs or your kidney or your liver, this now may elevate to preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is not something that's fun. It is a very dangerous diagnosis to have. This can happen as early as in the second half of your pregnancy and can happen any time in the postpartum period. With this, your kidneys are being affected, your liver is being affected, as well as other organs as well. You may have headaches that won't go away. You may have vision changes that are very new to you, meaning that you're having blurry vision or spots in your eyes or something that is very new for you. You may also have chest pain or you may have pain right below your right breast. Those four things is really 
key to understanding or suspecting that something might be going on inside of your body. Some people may also have excessive swelling in their feet, sometimes in their hands, or even inside of their face. Now in general, you may think pregnancy does cause swelling. We know this, yes. But in normal states, that swelling is only dependent, meaning that it is in the feet, the lower parts of your body, and not elevated anywhere else in your system. In PIH or preeclampsia, that swelling really occurs anywhere inside of your body. Outside of having high blood pressures, your doctor may also notice that you have a lot of protein in your urine. That can either be confirmed by you giving a urine sample, that is very small, like when you go to your doctor's office, or they may ask that you collect all of your urine for 24 hours. With that, we are counting the amount of protein that is being released by your kidney and will very much help us to understand the degree of preeclampsia or PIH that you have in your body at that time. In the postpartum state or after you've given birth, even though we're still trying to understand what really causes preeclampsia or elevated blood pressures in pregnancy or after birth, what we do know is that the placenta is the problem. Once you've delivered your baby, the placenta is out of your body. So ideally, the likelihood of you having that is now reduced because the problem is no longer there. However, that is not the case. Even after you have given birth, you may still have preeclampsia or elevated blood pressures because your uterus is still healing from that connection with the placenta. And so as that process occurs for the next six weeks after you've given birth, you may still have elevated blood pressures, even new onset elevated blood pressures at any point during that time. Having preeclampsia also exposes you to being able to get another disease process called eclampsia. So think of the pre as being the stage before the actual eclampsia occurs. Neither is warranted or neither we want, but once you get to a level of preeclampsia, meaning that your blood pressures are elevated and we're noting that your organs are also being affected, if treatment is not started right away, you can get eclampsia. The difference between the two is that once you get eclampsia, you are now having seizures and you can also get a stroke. This can be very deadly. The treatment for pregnancy-induced hypertension really is to monitor you during the rest of the pregnancy or in the postpartum period after you gave birth. If you have preeclampsia, there are several different things that may happen. You may receive antihypertensive medicine or blood pressure medicine to help to control the blood pressures so they are not too high. Again, you can get a stroke if your blood pressures get too high. Next, we may give you a medicine called magnesium to help to protect your brain against things like having seizures or strokes. May also give you another mix of medications just to help to stabilize your body and protect you from having more dangerous sequelae. If you do get eclampsia and you're having seizures, then we may also give you seizure medication. Most people after giving birth and passing the six weeks postpartum period will no longer be at an elevated risk of getting either PIH or preeclampsia. This is good news. However, in the subsequent pregnancy, it may occur again. It is very important that if you're having elevated blood pressures in pregnancy or after childbirth, that you really work with your providers so that you can get the best care. Be sure to listen to their recommendations, be very timely, and listen to your body. You know more than the doctors do based on what it is that you're feeling. Pay attention to your symptoms, communicate with your doctors so that you can get the best outcome. It's been a pleasure talking to you today and I hope that you've learned something about high blood pressure in pregnancy. I have a free ebook on my website at the link below that will help you create the best environment inside of your body and it is called Hormones Don't Lie. This is free to you. Just click the link below. Thank you so much for being here today and for having this conversation. I'm Dr. P, it's been a pleasure and I'll see you next time.